story of the United States Navy's frogmen is a story of adventure, of brave men against the enemy and against the sea. The work they did in the Pacific in World War II and later in the waters of Korea against the communists stamps the underwater demolition team sailors as giants of physical strength and towers of moral and physical courage. But the average frogman is not a giant. What is it then that makes a UDT man? Watch, we'll show you. It starts like this. This is so solid day. Just one day in the week affectionately called Hell Week. This week is as rough as it looks and nerve wracking as when this happens. Hell Week is designed to see how much you are willing to take to become a frogman. And we of the UDT want to know if you have what it takes to become one of us. Some decided they didn't want to become frogmen after all. The rest of us developed the attitude that being a frogman was worth paying any price for. At Chow, you looked around to see who was left. Your buddies are there and still smiling. You knew then that this was the kind of an outfit that would stick together. And together, you weathered basic. Hell week. So solid day. What's next on the agenda? The training tower at New London, Connecticut, and psychological underwater training. A hundred and ten feet of water set on its end. They said you were going to swim in it. All of it. It may not be part of the course, but the first psychological reaction comes when cold hands meet a warm back. First stop, the pressure chamber. Here you check out on your ability to withstand pressure. They take you down and bring you up, then down again. Before you're finished, you feel like a pneumatic yo-yo. You take the elevator to the top of the tank and you get the ungarbled word on how not to drown. The instructor was telling you that if you came up too fast and didn't let out enough air, your lungs would burst. If you let out too much air, you'd sink. Then you were doing it, and the instructor's voice haunted you. OK, boy. Back arched. Remember those bubbles. Follow those bubbles. OK? Blow it all out. You made the next one from 50 feet. In the lock at 50 feet, you had taken in air under eight atmospheres of pressure. And you blew. And blew. And you stalled out. You never had anything take so long in your life. You thought you'd never come up. But you did. And one by one, your buddies qualified. Then you are introduced to the tools of your trade. First, the Pirelli lung, an oxygen closed circuit rebreather type. With this outfit, no telltale bubbles to disclose your position. They tell you not to go below 30 feet with this rig, and they mean it. Some learned it the hard way. He recovered, but he got washed out. The aqua lung. An open circuit type was next. With this gear, you could get the key from the lock of Davy Jones's locker. It would go as deep as you could go. And with it, you met many the tank mascot. The next few days, you felt like a bar of soap in a hand laundry. Clean, but well used. You felt you really knew your stuff when you could swim to the bottom, ditch your aqua lung, and come back up. In fact, you were feeling more comfortable underwater than on top. 
Now, you were ready for bigger things. Advanced operational training at St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. This is where the weeks and months of previous training pay off for those of us who are still left. Here is where you become a real UDT man. You make the short, shallow swims first to get used to following a compass course underwater and sticking with your buddy. One week, you swim with the Pirelli. The next week, with the Aqualung. You swim in pairs, and your location is always marked on the surface with a buoy. You get to know your buddy on these swims. The two of you start to think as one. Every motion that is made is known by the two of you. Here in this world of curtailed life, in this silent world of dancing coral and playful fish, it's a mighty good feeling to know your buddy will be there with you. And you know that the vigil is maintained. Watching, waiting, expecting, praying that trouble never comes. But if it does come, help is only seconds away. some mornings when they get you up before the sun comes up and you do a few simple exercises. Just to keep those muscles stretched out and in shape, you do a couple hundred of these and a few of these and you might have to march a few miles before breakfast. But you sure do eat and there's no need to worry about getting fat. You may put on weight. When this training is over, it won't be your middle where the uniform gets tight. You train. Then, train some more. You improve on the methods taught before. You practice. Then practice some more. The old is worked on until it becomes letter perfect. Then you learn the new. A miss now means only more practice, but in combat you can't afford to miss. Unlike horseshoes, the close ones don't count. One thing about being a frogman, you not only swim underwater, you also get to ride under it. Getting into a submarine this way isn't too easy, but to a UDT man, the hard way comes later. Once we are underway, we are briefed on our mission. We get our compass course, the depth of the swim, the objective, and most important, where the submarine will be for pickup.
Silently, cautiously, we begin to lock out from the submarine. Set the compass on course. Then recheck your setting again. Everything checks out and you're on your way. You keep that hand out in front of you, using it like a submarine's diving plane to keep you level or to make you go up or down. Your hand also helps when you swim at night or in murky water. At least your head won't be the first thing to come in contact with an obstacle. You swim slowly on the way back. You can't afford to waste too much air with too fast a pace. You check your compass, watch, depth gauge. Let's see. Left the beach 15 minutes ago, 35 feet, reading 98 degrees on course. Should be sighting the submarine soon. You don't salute the colors as you pass, but you know below the soft undersea flutter of your flag, this is home. You get in as fast as you can. Not much air left, and the men behind have the same problems and are in the same boat, or should I say, they want to be in the same boat. A last minute check of equipment is made. The place? inside the submarine. The time, another training day. Perhaps night would be a better word. A maximum security swim at night. The swim will be made at a shallow depth, so Pirelli lungs are in order. At night, nature supplies a soft, glowing light to illuminate nearby objects in her underwater world. The dim light gives you some comfort, yet makes objects look strange and mystifying. You check your course and shove off. You keep your eyes glued to your compass, both going out and coming in. It can be a long swim if you miss your pickup point. The weeks progress, and so does our training. We know what to do in the event our equipment develops trouble. We get training in handling trouble from another source also. Some may call it judo.
You train hard. You play hard. Even the timid become bold. Liberty. Yes, liberty. One of the events looked forward to by everyone, and a UDT man is no exception. Here at St. Thomas, you stop to buy some fruit in the market square. Have a stroll down Main Street. Take a few pictures of an old fort built in 1671. You pay a visit to Bluebeard's Castle. Then you rest and look out over the Atlantic from Drake's seat. It's said that Drake used to look for pirate ships from here. But to a UDT man, the best liberty is spent underwater. From probing the mysterious depths of the seas, he lessens the mysteries. He becomes a creature of the sea. He learns skills that are not in the training course, but skills that will make him a better UDT man. Then it came, the day of the last qualifying swim. Make this one, you're in, a qualified UDT man. The word is passed. Half of the team swims with aqua lungs, Pirellis for the rest. Tanks are filled to capacity. Before this swim is over, you're going to need a full tank. This is going to be a long one, a mile and a half on compass course every foot of it underwater. 
you're allowed 100 feet from dead center of the target on the beach, yet outside that mark, well, you can always try it again next year. The skipper and the exec drive over to watch your departure. It's a good feeling to know that they take an interest in you. course is given and you set your compass. Time is drawing near. The craft are approaching the drop-off point. You secure your buddy line, give a last-minute check, and stand by. You know your equipment, you know how much you can take physically, yet the question is still there. Can I make it? Will I make it? You're on the way, Aqualung and Pirelli. Two by two, you leave the landing craft.
Yes, as we said before, within 100 feet of the target, you're qualified. A scorekeeper has kept a log to give an accurate rating to each frogman. Final scores are tallied and we head for home. After becoming qualified, further training is afforded by assignment to one of the units operating in conjunction with the fleet. Here, in simulated or realistic combat conditions, the frogman becomes even more specialized as a UDT man. Under these conditions, newer and better methods are worked out every day. Planting charges on the beach is but one of the frogman's specialties. Whether working in pairs, or working as a part of the complete team, the frogmen work silently, swiftly, to clear the way for the amphibious landings to follow. of the United States Navy's frogmen is a story of adventure, of brave men, of proud men, the men of the underwater demolition teams.